Hello everyone, welcome to AHR's IAS Institute. We are back again with the important questions for prelims 2020. So let us begin. Question number one, choose the correctly matched pairs, geographical features with their region. Number one, Kuwait Central, Asia. Number two, Brazzaville, Central Africa. Number three, Okavango Basin, Patagonian Desert. Number four, Rubal Kali, Arabian Peninsula. Select the correct answer using the codes given below. A. 1 and 3 only. B. 2 and 4 only. C. 1 and 2 only. D. 3 and 4 only. Correct answer is B. 2 and 4 only. 1 and 3 are incorrect. The first statement is incorrect because Kuwait Central is a region of forest and wetlands in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The region lies on the equator and the climate is tropical and humid and rainfall averages about 2000 mm annually. The region contains peat and is one of the world's biggest stocks of soil carbon. Brazzaville is the capital and the largest city of the Republic of Congo. Please note Brazzaville Declaration was signed to promote better management and communications conservation of Kuwait Central Region in the Congo Basin. The declaration was signed by Democratic Republic of Congo, the Republic of Congo and Indonesia to save peatlands as world's largest terrestrial organic carbon stock. The third statement is incorrect because Kalahari Okavango Basin is Endoric Basin and large lowland area covering most of Botswana and parts of Namibia, South Africa, Angola, Zambia and Zimbabwe. The outstanding physical feature in this basin and occupying the center, it is the large Kalahari Desert. Note, an endoric basin is a limited drainage basin that normally retains water and allows no outflow to other external bodies of water, such as rivers or oceans but it converges instead into lakes or swamps, permanent or seasonal, that equilibrate through evaporation. The Rubal Kali is the sand desert encompassing most of the southern third of the Arabian Peninsula. The desert covers including parts of Saudi Arabia, Oman, the UAE, the United Arab Emirates and Yemen. It is part of the larger Arabian desert. Let's move on. Question number two. Which of the following statements is or are correct? Number one. Doha Climate Change Conference reached an agreement to extend the life of the Montreal Protocol. Number two, it introduced the principle that countries vulnerable to the effects of climate change may be financially compensated in future by countries that fail to curb their carbon emissions. Now select the correct answer using the codes given below. A. 1 only, B. 2 only, C. Both or D. None. And the correct answer is B, 2 only. The first statement is incorrect because it extended the life of the Kyoto Protocol which had been due to expire at the end of 2012 until 2020. Please note the Kyoto Protocol is an international treaty which extends the 1992 United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change that commits state parties to reduce greenhouse gas emissions based on the scientific consensus that part 1, global warming is occurring and part 2, that it is extremely likely that human-made carbon dioxide emissions have predominantly caused it. Wording adopted by the Doha conference incorporated for the first time the concept of loss and damage, which is an agreement in principle that richer nations could be financially responsible to other nations for their failure to reduce carbon emissions. Question number 3. Consider the following countries, 1. Denmark, 2. Japan, 3. Russian Federation, 4. United Kingdom. Which of the above are the members of the Arctic Council? A. 1 and 3 only, B. 2 and 4 only, C. 1 and 2 only, D. 3 and 4 only. And the correct answer is A1 and 3 only. 
The Arctic Council is an intergovernmental forum promoting cooperation, coordination and interaction among the Arctic states, Arctic indigenous communities and Arctic inhabitants on common Arctic issues, in particular on issues about sustainable development and environmental protection in the Arctic region. The Arctic Council consists of the eight Arctic states, Canada, the Kingdom of Denmark including Greenland and Faroe Islands, Finland, Iceland, Norway, Russia, Sweden and the United States. Therefore, statement 2 and 4 are incorrect. Let's move on. Question number 4. Which of the following statements is or are correct? Number 1. Environment Protection Act was enacted by the government in the wake of the Bhopal tragedy. Number 2. The purpose of the act is to implement the decisions of the United Nations Conference on the Human Environment of 1972. Number 3. The powers to make law on matters related to the environment are mentioned in the union list. Select the correct answer using the codes given below. A. 1 and 2 only. B. 3 only. C. 1, 2, 3. Or D. 2 and 3 only. Correct answer is A1 and 2 only. The third statement is incorrect because environment is not included in any of the list. List 1 union, 2 state or 3 concurrent. In distribution of legislative power by the constitution. The act empowers the center to take all such measures as it deems necessary. By virtue of this act, central government has armed itself with considerable powers like coordination of action by state, planning and execution of nationwide programs, laying down environmental quality standards, especially those governing emission or discharge of environmental pollutants, placing restriction on the location of industries, authority to issue direct orders, included orders to close, prohibit or regulate any industry, power or entity for examination, testing of equipment and other purposes and power to analyze the sample of air, water, soil or any other substance from any place. The Act explicitly prohibits discharges of environmental pollutants in excess of prescribed regulatory standards. There is also a specific prohibition against handling hazardous substances. Section 19 provides that any person in addition to authorized government officials may file a complaint with the court alleging an offence under the Act. This citizen suit provision requires that the person has to give notice of not less than 60 days of the alleged offence of pollution to the central government. Next question. Consider the following statements with reference to the tiger conservation. Number 1. The tiger reserves are constituted on a core buffer strategy where these areas are notified by the state government in consultation with an expert committee. Number 2. Tiger Task Force was set up to look into the problems of tiger conservation in the country on the basis of the recommendations of National Tiger Conservation Authority. Which of the following statements is or are correct? Number 1. A. 1 only. B. 2 only. C. Both. Or D. None. Correct answer is D. None. Now the first statement is incorrect because core areas are notified by the state government in consultation with an expert committee. The core area is kept free of biotic disturbances and forestry operations where collection of minor forest produce, grazing, human disturbances are not allowed within. This is also the area where tiger conservation projects in the country draw a lot of criticism because according to the Forest Rights Act passed by the Indian government in the year 2006, it recognizes the rights of some forest dwelling communities in forest areas and hence the project overlooks the role of abuse of power by authorities in the tiger crisis. The Act defines buffer zone as the area peripheral to the critical tiger habitat or core area providing supplementary habitat for dispersing tigers, besides offering scope for coexistence of human activity. The limits of such areas are determined with the concerned Gram Sabha and an expert committee constituted for the purpose. The second statement is incorrect because Tiger Task Force was set up on the basis of the recommendations of the National Board for Wildlife. 
Please note, Tiger Reserves are governed by the Project Tiger 1973. It is a centrally sponsored scheme of the Ministry of Environment and Forest. It is administered by the National Tiger Conservation Authority. Its aim is to protect tigers from extinction by ensuring a viable population in their natural habitats. Let's move on. Number 6. Which of the following statements is or are, in, are correct? Number 1. Government Instant Messaging System designed and developed by National Informatics Center. Number 2. It is built for employees of central and state government departments and organizations for intra and intercommunications. Number 3. GIMS employs end-to-end -end encryption for one-to-one -one messaging. Select the correct answer using the codes given below. You have to tell me which one is correct. A. One only. B. Two and three only. C. None. Or D. One, two, three. Which means all three are correct. Correct answer is D. One, two, three. All three are correct. It is an Indian equivalent of popular messaging platforms such as WhatsApp and Telegram for secular internal use. It is being developed as a secure Indian alternative without the security concerns attached with apps hosted abroad or those owned by foreign entities. Next question. Consider the following statements with reference to direct tax. Number 1. There has been a growth of more than 80% in the number of returns filed in the last four financial years and direct tax GDP ratio was the highest FY 2017 and 2018. The government has reduced the corporate tax rate for manufacturing companies. Select the correct answer using the codes given below. A. 1 only. B. 2 only. C. Both or D. None. Correct answer is C. Both. Both are correct. This piece of information was in news recently because the draft legislation of the new direct tax code, DTC, was submitted by the task force headed by Akhilesh Ranjan to the government of India. It will revise, consolidate and simplify the structure of direct tax laws in India into a single legislation. Question number 8. Which of the following are part of the services provided by payment banks? Number 1. Accept NRI deposits. Number two, sell mutual funds, insurance, or pensions. Number three, offer internet banking. Number four, offer credit cards. Number five, maintain 75% of deposits in government bonds. Number six, have 25% of branches in unbanked areas. Select the correct answer using the codes given below A, 1, 2, 3, 4 only. B, 2 and 4 only. C, 2, 3, 5, 6 only. D, 1, 3 and 4 only. The correct answer is C, 2, 3, 5, 6 only. Payment banks cannot accept NRI deposits or they can not even offer credit cards or extend loans, handle cross-border remittances. The banks which could be differentiated on the account of capital requirements, scope of activities and serve the needs of a certain demographic segment of the population are known as differentiated banks or niche banks. The idea of differentiated banks was mooted by Nachiket More, Committee 2014 for Financial Inclusion. It can be classified as payment banks, small finance banks, regional rural banks, local area banks, wholesale and long-term finance banks. Payment banks have a minimum capital of rupees 100 crore, maintain 25% of deposits in other banks, they have at least 26% investment by Indians and have 1 black rupees cap for deposits, uh, deposits in one account. Let's move on. Question number 9. Which of the following crops are grown during Rabi cropping season? 1. Mustard, 2. Barley, 3. Bajra or 4. Cotton. Select the correct answer using the codes given below. A. 1 and 3 only. B. 2 and 4 only. C. 1 and 2 only. D. 3 and 4 only. Correct answer is 
one and two only mustard and barley the third and the fourth statements are incorrect because bajra and cotton are part of the kharif cropping season which is sown between the months of june to july rice maize sorghum soybean groundnuts moong are the major kharif crops in india rabi cropping season is between the months of october to december and they include wheat peas and gram zaid cropping season between rabi and kharif cropping season including seasonal fruits vegetables and fodder crops let's move on to the last question question number 10 mount elbrus is located in which of the following countries a iran b russia c japan or d new zealand and the correct answer is B Russia Mount Elbrus is a dormant volcano in the Caucasus mountains in southern Russia and it is the highest mountain in Europe Please note Elbrus should not be confused with Elburz also known as Elburz mountains in the Iran The Elburz mountain range forms a barrier between the South Caspian and the Iranian plateau Mount Damavin the highest mountain in Iran which is located in the central Elburz mountains So there's a difference between Elbrus and Elburz That's all for today. Thank you for watching us. Please like, comment and share. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um we'll be back soon. All the best.